Hi, I'm Felix Dodds. I'm Executive Director of Stakeholder Forum and uh, one of the co-authors for the book Only One Earth, uh, The Long Road Via Rio to Sustainable Development. And I'm joined here by Liz Thompson, who's an Executive Coordinator for Rio Plus 20 and one of my co-authors, um, Maurice Strong, the former Secretary General of Stockholm and the Rio Summit. And we just thought we'd spend a few minutes perhaps reflecting um, on the last 40 years and the lessons maybe that Rio plus 20 uh, can, can learn from that. And perhaps maybe I could start by just saying I think that um, the challenges for um, Rio plus 20 is to learn the lesson of implementation that what has happened in the last 40 years or one of the key issues has been that what has been agreed hasn't been implemented and for me that's one of the most important um, activities that needs to happen after Rio plus 20. We must learn now to take those agreements and actually make something of it. But Liz, what about you? I think that um, the book is very useful in helping to give us a perspective or what of what the lessons we can learn are. I certainly found it very refreshing. I felt that a lot of thought had gone into it. Um, when I got it and started to read it, it made me pause and look back and ask myself, what perhaps could we have done differently had we seen this before? I liked the idea very much that the book speaks to the issue of gaps whereas the conference speaks to the gap in implementation. And, and the book seeks to draw a broader parameter and to say, look, there are gaps. There are gaps in relation to implementation, but there are gaps that have to do with finance. There are gaps that have to do with economics. There are gaps that have to do with governance. And these are issues to which we have to, to treat. I also particularly liked the idea of the survival agenda and some of the thoughts in there which I found very refreshing. Um, there are some of the things that one has been hearing, but there were other things that I thought were new, which um, suggested a high level of reflection about where we need to go and what's the way forward. And I, I liked um, the way in which it ended when you sort of challenged us to remember that this is a choice that we have to do things differently or uh, to let our fears dominate our action and, and cause um, chaos in the end. So. Um, for me, I think this is a, an extremely useful work. Uh, lots of people will have an interest in it, and I, I hope that um, it really serves uh, what I hope is the intended purpose, that is to, to make us reflect on what we can do better. And Morris, I mean, having played such a critical role in the last 40 years, well, one of the first issues we put in the survival agenda, of course, was the Earth Charter, the need for an ethical base to this process. I wonder whether you had some reflections. Well, <coughs> this has been a long road, which has led to Rio, and the road from Rio will be certainly long and difficult. The conditions politically and economically today are not nearly as conducive to significant progress at Rio Plus 20 as they were either in 1972 at Stockholm or at the Earth Summit in Rio. So we've got a, some real challenges and uh, I think there's no question that there'll be a lot of, uh, a lot of participation, high-level participation, but I am concerned that the, there is a f tremendous uh, gap between science and politics. While scientists have made it clear that we have actually got more and more towards a tipping point uh, since, uh, certainly since Stockholm and also since the Earth Summit, that nevertheless it, the politics has, has actually gone the other direction. There's less political will today with the preoccupation people have with, with other problems, economic and political, that are far less important. Uh, but command the attention of the politicians and the public. So we've got a long road ahead. We're, we're not going to solve everything at Rio plus 20, but it is a very important ma milestone that will tell us how far we've come. And as uh, Felix has said, implementation is a key issue because gov if governments had done all the things they agreed to do in Stockholm and 
in Johannesburg and at the Earth Summit and in various conventions, we would be far much farther along the road to a sustainable future. And a system of accountability is one of the key things that should and could emerge. And it can emerge even if governments don't agree. Uh, I personally am very actively interested in setting up a very credible system of accountability uh, that will uh, remind people constantly and regularly about how governments and others are shaping up to the commitments that they've made in the past. So it's an important milestone, <coughs> but it's certainly not the end of the road. I mean, do you think, Liz, that one of the kind of big outcomes from Rio Plus 20 might be the conversation on the Sustainable Development Goals? Very much so. Um, in fact, I am really inclining to the view that we really have to start thinking about time frames and targets, but more important than that, that we shouldn't call them the Sustainable Development Goals because there has already uh, developed fairly entrenched positions either pro-SDGs or anti-SDGs or pro-MDGs and the issue of how we reconcile the two sets of goals has become a major dialogue point. So in my view, we should start to talk about either global sustainability goals or global development goals to reinforce the idea that these are universal targets for everybody, for every country, for every citizen, and um, that it is that will be a framework which reconciles, which encompasses both the notion of the MDGs and the SDGs, but really gives us the strategic aspirational objective which is, is the, the critical thing. Um, and I'm hoping that that kind of language will become more and more embraced as the process goes on and that we will stop fixating on whether we should have SDGs or MDGs and what we're going to do one about the other. I think that's very true. I think the other interesting issue for uh, those of us who love governance is that in fact uh, 72 gave us UNEP 92 gave us the CSD and we've had a crisis both in the environment and the sustainable development governance area. Rio Plus 20 will clearly um, give us stronger institutions in this process, but will it give us strong enough institutions? I don't know what your thoughts are, Maurice, on this. Well, <coughs> the institutions have always been weaker than they need to be. And I do hope that uh, Rio Plus 20 will improve the situation, but it won't solve the problem because the weakness comes from the unwillingness of governments to provide the support, financial and political, that are necessary. You recall that <coughs> probably in Stockholm, the so called Brussels Group, yes. which <coughs> included the countries that had supported the conference, made a quiet agreement that they would not, or that to ensure that they would not allow whatever emerged from the Stockholm Conference to have any significant mm -hmm. capability or resources. And uh, the situation today politically is not very conducive to major commitments, for example, new and additional resources, access te to technologies. They are, uh, so uh, I would, say that we have a real challenge at Rio Plus 20, but we, at the very least, it's got to give further impetus to making people aware that we are near a tipping point, particularly in climate change, and that we do have to move, and that it is in fact a matter of survival, so not survival of the planet, the planet will survive, survival of the conditions that make life possible as we know it on the planet. I think uh, one of the exciting ideas, and this will be our last comment um, in a sense, um, is the work done by Jochen Rockström on the planetary boundaries. I think that's been an exciting development from the science place. And what I really do think has been important is the way that the science community has then brought together future Earth mm -hmm. as a platform where they will work together to give us the best information on science and as you were you were at uh, the under pressure. yeah and I wonder if you had some reflections on that 
I think it's a very important collaboration. Um, I've been hearing people say that there needs to be greater contact between the scientists and the, the policy makers. I don't agree. I think there needs to be greater collaboration on policy issues uh, between the scientists and the policy makers. And that's a very important connection from the perspective that the level of confidence in politicians right now is very low. There is a high degree of cynicism. But if there, is, uh, if there are objective standards put out there by independent uh, scientists, independent qualified people, then there is likely to be greater attention paid by the general public uh, to the issues. Uh, so that we, we need to understand going forward what are the critical thresholds, what are the, the important tipping points, um, how we address them, what the mitigation strategies can be, how we circumvent some of the difficulties, and, and where uh, we can reverse or halt some of the very negative trends. So that that working together uh, will become even more important going forward. It will be useful to see uh, coming out of Rio, whether some of the recommendations of some of the countries to date or the GSP will be taken up about the notion of the UN having a, a chief scientist, the establishment of a scientific panel to support the work of the Secretary General, and having the Secretary General report um, on um, a cyclical basis on the state of the planet. All of these are, are important connections that then have to be made between science, the multilateral system, and, and the political directorate. Maybe the final word, Morris. I mean, you, I remember uh, we were on a uh, speak, we both spoke in Japan, I think, in 2001, and you brought up the issue of environmental security that early. I mean, has this decade showed that that agenda has become a very profound one for the future? Well, it is really one of the things in which, one of the major things in which Rio Plus 20 must make some progress because in, in fact um, we are faced with threats to our very survival as we have recognized in our previous comments. Um, and uh, I, I, I think awareness, governments are not going to do more than what their people are pressuring them to do. So what Rio can do is create a new awakening on the part of people. Yes. Because the politicians are ultimately accountable to people. And today, there are very few, fortunately there are some, but there are very few politicians who are really out front on these issues, who are going to be the real leaders on these issues. I mean, the United States is facing an ideological divide. Uh, my own country, Canada, is at the bottom of the list of those that are uh, going to do positive things. Uh, and uh, conditions are, are bad, and yet the scientists are making it clear that we really have to. Now, I'm not really a scientist, but I am a member of the National Academy of Sciences of the US. So I'm very, and one of the reasons that I have always been very active in using the set when, when we ran the, the real conference, I, my, instead of one scientific advisor, I had the International Council of Scientific Unions with a whole world network of scientists available uh, to me. So I've always myself uh, insisted on being guided. Now that doesn't mean that, that uh, everybody listens to me or that they listen to scientists, but it is the scientists have got to have a word. It's not just cooperation because um, it is cooperation, of course, but it's more than that. The scientists have to help make the, the people understand why, why they have to insist on action by their, poli their, politi their politicians. And uh, they're very good at that because the scientists are usually more credible than the politicians. <laughs> I think just to, did you want to? Yeah, I wanted to ask Maurice a question, please. <laughs> yeah. You are iconic. <laughs> it is, it, when one says environment or sustainable development, 
one thinks more strong. And in terms of these conferences, this is 40 years that, that you have engaged in this process. And much as we would like it, you may not be around for 2032. So if, if you had to, to say that there was one single significant thought or moment across the years that stands out that you want to comment on, that you, that you feel this has been a major success or a major failure or I just don't understand why we're here. Or one thing that stands out in the icon's head, what is it? Well, first of all, I appreciate your generous comments, but I've never done anything alone except make my mistakes that I do all by myself. Uh, but but uh, I think that if you look at, at uh, at Stockholm and Rio, they really did take some important decisions. I mean, for example, the principles in Stockholm, one particular one that uh, nations have the right, sovereign right to develop their own resources, but in doing so, the obligation not to uh, impinge on the environment of others or the global commons. Well, that is a powerful principle which will require, if it's implemented, that nations be accountable uh, to others that they have affected with their activities. The, the, and then Agenda 21, which has been repudiated by the Republican Party in the United States, which is certainly not an advanced, it's a, it's a sign of the political retrogression uh, that we've experienced. Uh, but nevertheless, the, when you think the, uh, that Rio, the Air Summit produced agreement on the Climate Change Convention, and climate change is probably the biggest single issue facing us and affecting our survivability. Uh, and uh, on the Biological Diversity Convention, and uh, the initiation of the process with, which led to the co Commission on Desertification. So they really did some very important things. The problem, as you mentioned, Felix, in your earlier remarks, is, is implementation. If governments had done all the things they've agreed to do, would be a long way along the road to sustainability. Rio hopefully will give us a further boost along that road. I think it will finally just reignite the, the vision. It has nearly twice as many stakeholders accredited as Copenhagen. It has the largest business um, delegation, 2,000 business uh, accredited to the conference. So. I think the opportunity for uh, those people to then take the message from Rio and to take it back and do something when they get back to their capitals, to their communities and to their um, workplace will be the, the living kind of uh, legacy of Rio. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.